You're watching the new Stack Makers, a podcast for people who develop, deploy, and manage at scale software. For more information and articles about at scale technologies, please visit thenewstack.io. Now enjoy the show. Hello, and welcome to another On the Road episode of the New Stack Makers. I'm your host, Heather Joslin, editor in chief of the New Stack. And today we're going to talk about uh, data and ethics and, and doing the right thing and why we should make it easier and not harder and all the challenges involved in that. And uh, we're talking today with uh, Meg Dougherty. Hi, Meg. Hi. Nice Hi. to be here. N nice, to, nice to, thank you for joining us. And, and uh, we are, um, you, you, we're here in uh, San Diego, Jupiter Con. You gave the keynote address, one of the keynote addresses this morning. And um, Meg is a uh, fellow at, at the Harvard Medical School Center for Bioethics. And uh, we're going to talk about what you talked about in, in, the, um, in, in the keynote, but also the bigger issue of, of data and sharing and ethics and, and uh, how to make that a um, action, how to make protecting it, data and sharing it uh, ethically uh, an easy thing to do. So um, you talked about, you know, how to make um, the, uh, the right thing to do the easy thing to do. Um, it's often the hard thing to do. Um, but uh, what are some of the challenges within an organization that can arise that make it harder to do the right thing? Yeah, absolutely. Um, my talk today was really about first defining these two things. Mm -hmm. um, that's the hardest thing when things start to fall apart or decisions get made and teams are confused. It's often because there could be a definition problem. Mm -hmm. So first and foremost is deciding what is what is right and what is easy mm -hmm. and making sure that we understand those two things. And one of my, my core messages in my speech earlier today was about Deciding what is right often shows up in our core values mm -hmm. and an organization or a team. And so having that scaffolding of for decision making is really helpful. Mm -hmm. And so some um, the organi organizations that I've partnered with and I have worked with, that's where things start to fall apart when that scaffolding for ethics doesn't quite exist. Or maybe it just, as I said, it's more like a hallway poster and people don't really think it's used for yeah. decision making. Um, but really having those structures in place matter. Yeah, and that that's a good point too about um, the values of an organization. And you, as you mentioned, sometimes it's a hallway poster. <laughs> the mission statement or the values are not um, are not uh, well known by everybody who works there, um, or they're seen as you know some some something that people put together early on that exactly may not necessarily apply in, in real life. Um, so so aligning with value the values of the organization. Um, you you talked in your speech about a, a specific project you were involved in. Um, can you can you talk about that a little bit? And, yeah, and yeah, for sure. Um, so the project that I was involved with, we have a, a group of fifteen thousand researchers who are using Jupyter Notebook for genomic research, mm -hmm. and there are many ways that Jupyter gets configured, and most importantly, it's meant to be shareable and embrace principles of open science. Mm -hmm. um, we had built Jupyter Notebook inside a secure environment uh, surrounded by uh, federal policies. Mm -hmm. And so sharing just wasn't, uh, you know, it was technically possible, yeah. but there were policy reasons why we could not share publicly. Most importantly, patient privacy reasons. Okay. And this was at NA, NA? And this was at the National Institutes of Health. Okay. Yes. And so um, as, as we work through that, getting together the right policy stakeholders with the technologists to really say, what, how, how can we make this happen or what needs to be true for this to happen? Mm -hmm. And um, in the story that I spoke about this morning is really about um, building internal momentum for an idea. Mm -hmm. And that's what me and a few colleagues that were with me on the consortium really just decided it's not just about a button that needs to exist. By having this button that says publish on it, we are making a commitment to open science, which we already are. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of an example where the technology and the policy and then the values come into play to really check in with ourselves of, are we open science? And the answer is yes, <laughs> we are. Mm -hmm. But there's always the answer of to what extent. And yeah. there are limits to, yeah. We ha My old boss um, used to say, uh, we want to share widely and wisely. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of a good kind of mantra to keep with you to remember what we're trying to accomplish. Yeah. Yeah. So, so there was, you, 
we often talk about when we talk about change or a new project within a, an, a software engineering organization, we talk about stakeholders, you know, you stakeholders, you can't, it can't be top down. It has to be mm -hmm. involve everybody. Can you talk a little bit about, you know, so did you have like interview, like meetings with the different stakeholders? Did you like, how did it work in a practical sense? Yeah, I, um, so my, my life before technology was, um, more on the political side of, 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 uh, policymaking. And so I spent a lot of time building coalitions and alliances and getting volunteer communities to work together. Mm -hmm. And so I'm proud to say that many of those skills <laughs> translate into en engineering and software organizations. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of it is really, um, yeah, like you said, sometimes it's, top down, but mm -hmm. oftentimes in these sort of big, massive digital transformation projects, it can be bottom up because mm -hmm. folks who are on the ground doing the work, they're going to see exactly where the problems are. So what, what my approach often was, was finding other people who wanted to make some things happen. Mm -hmm. And like I said, really just finding, getting it to finding out how to get it done, you know, <laughs> yeah. each brick wall and just saying, how are we going to move through that? Yeah. Did you find, do you find that, um, the technologists are, are concerned about ethics or do you feel it? I mean, we seem definitely hear from developers who are concerned about, about the ethics of what they're doing or was it something that, was there an education process around it for them? Yeah, I think, um, it's definitely, we're all human yeah. and we all have, we all make ethical decisions every mm -hmm. moment. And so part of why I'm passionate about bridging these gaps is to really remind people, even if they're tech in the role, social role of technologists, mm -hmm. um, they have some ethics. And so bringing those to the surface, it requires, I think a lot of, uh, trust building in conversations. Mm -hmm. Some people don't, you know, they, if, if somebody is used to engineering problems, they have a, if this, then that yes, no, very kind of this structural way of producing things. Yeah. But talking about ethics and values can feel overwhelming because it can mm. feel messy. Um, so part of what I'm hoping to kind of what I wanted to bring today and what yeah. I wanted to bring here and onto the future is like, let's just structure ethics and values conversations in a way that doesn't really scare people away and lowers some of the barriers mm. um, to having a conversation. Yeah. I think sometimes people feel when, when in, I've been part of ethics code writing and other organizations have been involved in. And, and I think people, what you want to avoid is like, people feeling it's like a list of got thing gotcha things or like like a checklist of yeah if you don't do these x number of things you're a bad person or something exactly and yeah. i w one one opportunity i took last year was to complete a fellowship in bioethics mm -hmm. um which brings me here today but going through a year long fellowship the, the outcomes were really about ethical analysis mm -hmm. and having confidence to look at a really thorny problem and knowing how to methodically walk through that problem to reach some type of consensus. Mm -hmm. It's one thing that I really, um, really resonates for me working in healthcare technology is this duty to resolve. Mm -hmm. We have a duty to resolve problems and often in software engineering, we can have kind of problems that are just floating there, but yeah. we just keep doing the work. We just yeah. hope that it doesn't show up right? <laughs> and so so we keep doing the work but really um having deliberative spaces to bring people in to just say it's okay yeah it's they're non-punitive spaces to be open to s saying the wrong thing or maybe not not really knowing what to ask yeah um so those types of things really help i think just kind of lower the i like to lower the temperature on the conversation mm -hmm. i like to talk about ethics but i'm also a very positive person <laughs> so some <laughs> people that think ethics and they think okay i'm not talking to her she sounds like legal yeah and that, that, those are two different things yeah yeah, yeah. Well, like the concept where you're talking about is so what they, I guess, like psychological safety, I guess they say in engineering organizations yeah. where you, yeah. you can say, you can ask the question that might be dumb, quote unquote, or, or, and no one will, you know, um, there'll be no, no consequences like, for that. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, you, you've put together like sort of a three question framework for dealing with, uh, navigating those ethical tensions in, in one's work in the workplace. Um, can you explain that framework? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the first two questions come from um, an amazing colleague and creative director. Um, and the questions are, who is it good and why? Why is it good and who is it for? Mm -hmm. And so uh, why is it good and who is it for really just helps frame your problem set. Well, mm -hmm. Who are we solving for? What are we solving for? Mm -hmm. But I think the third question that I've really been sitting with for a while, especially now we've got this these advances in technology happening so quickly 
to us. <laughs> Oftentimes, it feels like it's happening to us. We're not yeah. shaping it. Yeah. The third question is, why is it bad? Mm. And uh, we work in agile frameworks and methodologies, and there are ceremonies that we call, you know, uh, pre-mortem. So let's have a let's have a meeting where we talk about how all the things could go wrong in mm -hmm. this project ahead of time, so we can at least get it out. We know the risks, and we can sort of manage them. Mm -hmm. I think the same is necessary for ethics. It's okay to be working in these new emerging fields. Mm -hmm. I think it's also equally important to pause and say, where could this go wrong? Yeah. And, ju and just sit with that discomfort. That doesn't mean you have to stop, but I, I want to encourage people to do that with open eyes and open mm. understanding of what, what could go wrong and then, ma and then help manage against it. Yeah. 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 It definitely avoids the sort of, um, helps to avoid the, um, sort of a herd mentality of you know exactly we all agree it's a good idea so yeah <laughs> or, or, or post talk and say oh we we had no idea this could happen you know yeah. <laughs> it's like well yeah i'm yeah. shocked to discover gambling in this institution <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. exactly yeah exactly yeah yeah um you also you talk, in the keynote you talked about um th i mean we're at an open source conference basically i mean that the word open isn't always a friendly word for for everybody so can you talk about that a little bit and um, yeah. how you how you design systems for people who are not in the room? Absolutely. I found my way to um, Jupyter and open source software through um, two particular open uh, ideas and projects. One was um, open government data mm -hmm. and civic technology, and the other is open Internet mm -hmm. and the freedom of, of Internet around the world. And in those two experiences, through the Mozilla Foundation and the OpenGov Foundation, I really started to see the limits of openness. Mm -hmm. And there's a whole other podcast episode <laughs> in this, but the, the main takeaway is that um, openness often feels like free, open, of course, why wouldn't we want these, these things out there? Mm -hmm. But they're not neutral. When data gets into the wrong hands, when open data is um, uh, overexposed, mm -hmm. then we... we, we um, perpetuate real harm. And often, if you look at many different examples, there are communities, marginalized communities, who have been the most impacted by these open data. And in my talk today, I kind of framed it as, you know, open data can mean extracted data, mm -hmm. as can open science. It can feel like extractive. Right. And that's where one one area where I'm proud to work with a bunch of, of folks where there's that closed feedback loop. So mm -hmm. when we take when we take data, when data we have a, enter into a data donation relationship, that data is shared back with participants. The benefits of a new drug from a clinical trial actually becomes free for the patient who gave the data to support the clinical trial. So I mm -hmm. think there are things we can manage with openness, um, but there are limitations and it's not neutral. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one one uh, more thing, how, if I'm, say I'm a developer uh, or a, an, a software engineer or in, a technologist of some kind, how do I educate myself about these issues of ethics and software ethics and data. Yeah, absolutely. If you're at a research institution, find your humanities, medical humanities, bioethics, philosophy departments, mm -hmm. get curious. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that I have found, um, I, I, I'm not an academic, but I found myself in academic spaces over the mm -hmm. past few years. People want to share. Mm -hmm. They want to share their knowledge. They want to, they want you to know about their work, ask questions mm -hmm. and, you can also find your colleagues. Um, I, I One of the reasons why I gave this talk today, I knew that there would be a few people in the audience who would come up afterwards and say, this resonates. I'm so glad that you said these things. And sure enough, those people did. And those are the, those are the people who matter for my talk today. Mm -hmm. Because I don't want people to feel like there's no one else thinking about this. Yeah. And that we can connect with each other. Mm -hmm. um, but I should take this moment to say that's um, part of why I started this new space uh, called Both and Neither, mm -hmm. where I'm going to bring people together to have these types of conversations that I hope will kind of resonate throughout um, the scientific spaces and um, yeah, re focused on research software engineers because those are those are my people. Mm -hmm. um, but expanding beyond that, okay. yeah. And when you say a new space, what 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 exactly? What does that mean? Yeah, so I have um, the a new creative studio uh, okay. called Both and Neither, and we're going to be running community workshops and hosting events and socializing these types of frameworks, easy to use, easy to understand, implementing ethics in your technology work. Excellent. Yeah. And um, any anything else 
on the on the that that's that's the the, the big thing the, that's the, on the, the on the agenda. On yeah, the, the agenda. big the thing that's on the agenda is this, and I'm also um, stepping into uh, another role. Mm -hmm. um, where I'm going to be full time at a, the nation's first oncology focused venture studio. Okay. And I'm really excited the way that cancer research and technology are coming together in this way. Mm -hmm. um, we have a chance to cure cancer and, and I can't wait to bring these thoughts there because mm -hmm. there's no place on earth that has more complex ethical decision making at the bedside at the moment of care mm -hmm. than when you're faced with a cancer diagnosis. It's very yeah. true. Yeah. Well, um, it's been a pleasure to talk to you, and yeah. thank you for joining me today. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, this has been, uh, we want to thank uh, Meg Dougherty from uh, the Harvard Medical School Center for Bioethics. And uh, this has been, uh, we also want to thank all of you for joining us for this conversation. And this has been Heather Joslin for the New Stack Makers on the road at JupyterCon in San Diego. We'll see you next time. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're on all the major social media platforms. You can always find us at thenewstack.io. We hope to see you soon.